Hello and welcome to a brief tutorial on creation of straight tooth bevel gear using Creo 3.0. A typical bevel gear arrangement would be like this. Since bevel gears are designed in pair, uh, it is advisable to have this kind of approach which I am going to demonstrate. We will start with creation of a notebook or what used to be known as a layout in the Pro Engineer. You can uh, create a new layout or a notebook using this option. Initially we will define certain parameters which will be used as the input values. The highlighted parameters are to be created at the very beginning of this exercise. Sigma is the shaft angle. Generally it is 90 degree but it can be anything uh, like it can be an acute angle also. M is the module or the normal module to be specific. Alpha is the pressure angle and Z1 and Z2 are the number of teeth in pinion and crown gear respectively. Once we create these parameters, then we need to create a table like this and we will have to populate the table with these values. I have taken the reference from a gear handbook, sorry, from the KHK gears. Uh, these gears are standard straight bevel gears. Uh, they are also known as a Klingenberg bevel gears. I have taken these relations to build my bevel gear. Uh, this is this uh, handbook is readily available in the internet. Anyone can download it at their convenience. Once we define these initial parameters, we will define the relationships as given in the data handbook. So these many relations will uh, define different geometrical parameters of the bevel gear. They are also populated in this table. Once the table is complete, then we can begin with the actual modeling of a pinion and crown gear. I have already modeled pinion and this uh, pinion and the crown gear we will uh, trace back the steps which were used in creating this gear. This is just done to avoid the cut short the video time. I will unhide these uh, curves and surfaces. Okay. Now let us start from the beginning. Okay, we need to create a sketch with these orange color line segments. I hope you can uh, see them distinguished between the maroon color dimension and the orange color geometry lines. And we shall uh, dimension and we shall give the relations like this. This dimension happens to be the cone angle. This is the root angle. This is the tip angle. These are the reference addendum angle and dedendum angle. This is the face width. This is the axial face width. This is the cone distance. Addendum value, dedendum value, reference gear diameter or the PCD, pitch circle diameter. The, the procedure to draw this sketch is, we shall draw this line first up to a certain length 
then extend it in a parallel manner to some more length and we will dimension that as 22 or this in this case it is 22 it is basically face width then we shall draw two small perpendicular lines to this corresponding to addendum and dedendum at the back of the cone similarly we will draw two more short lines perpendicular to this uh, pitch line again they correspond to the addendum and the dedendum at the inner cone side and we will also dimension this uh, pitch circle diameter so to dimension the diameter we need to have a center line at the uh, center or uh, Okay, once we complete this uh, sketch, we will define a new datum plane such that it is passing through this axis and it is perpendicular to the or normal to the front plane. So this is going to be our, this orange color plane is going to be our new plane where we will be defining all our gear profiles on the newly created plane we shall draw three concentric circles with end point of this line as the center of these circles and also the radius corresponds to the end point of this dedendum uh, pitch and the addendum portion and we shall uh, since they are already constrained to these existing geometries we can only define a reference diameter here in this case I have given taken the reference radius of the pitch circle this will be used in the involute uh, curve creation next we shall define a new coordinate system such that it is at the end point of this curve uh, with the z axis or a z axis normal to the newly created plane datum 1 and x axis normal to the front plane so this is going to be our new coordinate system with this orientation we shall also create one axis such that it passes through the z axis of the newly created coordinate system this shall be used in the manipulating the involute curve later on now we shall define a new involute curve in the plane and also using this newly created coordinate system we will see how it is done arbitrarily we shall take 90 degree for the angle this 90 degree corresponds to the extent of unwinding of the circle and a theta 1 is the parameter which is temporarily created to convert 90 degrees into corresponding radians. Rad is the parameter which defines the radius of the base circle. It is basically radius of the pitch circle into cos of pressure angle. So this D17 corresponds to the reference dimension what we had created in the earlier sketch now these are the parametric equations for the involute you can note down these relations as they are no need to worry about the derivation or the correctness maybe in a later on uh, tutorial I shall show how this uh, formula is derived but for the time being you can uh, simply note down and use it in your modeling now an involute curve is created now as you can see the starting point of the involute curve lies on the front plane but we want the involute curve or rather the teeth one of the teeth to be symmetric to the uh, front plane so in order to do that we have to do certain manipulations which we will be doing it now 
we will create a point at the intersection of this uh, involute curve and the pitch circle then we will create a new datum plane such that it passes through the newly created point and the axis passing through the z axis of the new coordinate system now we shall measure the angular offset between the newly created plane DTM2 and the front plane and we will save it as a feature so automatically a pair of parameter called angle is created that is the default proe parameter we shall copy this uh, geometry and paste using spaced special we will all create do the rotation manipulation such that this involute curve crosses this pitch circle diameter exactly where front plane is passing through here you should uh, observe one thing that I have used the resultant geometry not the curve as such you can see the difference between uh, this uh, bold green line and this light green line I hope you know the difference between uh, this uh, type of selection again we will rotate it in the opposite direction corresponding to the one half of the gap between two teeth so for that we are using one relation here this first one is for the first rotation what we have just done this second relation is for rotating in the opposite direction corresponding to the half of the teeth width here z1 by cos delta 1 is being used not just z1 it is z1 by cos delta 1 that is because when we design a spare uh, bevel gear we do some approximation of converting it to a equivalent spur gear so the number of teeth will be different in the equivalent spur gear it is known as a virtual number of teeth so z1 by cos delta 1 gives us the virtual number of teeth in the equivalent spur gear so in uh, many of the tutorials available in uh, youtube don't consider this uh, factor they simply do it as a spur gear although they look like uh, actual uh, bevel gear but in reality they will be incorrect so you have to use the virtual number of teeth so once using that relation we will rotate it in the opposite direction to get it with the half teeth width then we will mirror this newly create this uh, moved uh, involute curve about the front plane Okay. next we shall create a sketch in DTM1 using this two mirrored uh, involute curves this is an arc which is uh, drawn concentrating to this uh, addendum circle with an offset of 5 mm here in this particular example I have given the root fillet within the sketch in environment but afterwards i have found out that uh, giving the radius within the sketch fan environment may cause problem later on when you try to change the number of teeth it so happened that for this particular combination of teeth 20 in pinion and 40 in the crown gear this is working but if i change the teeth uh, number of teeth values to say 20 to 80 
the model will fail so it is better that you avoid giving radius in the sketch environment you just make it a sharp one also please note that when the number of teeth is less than 32 approximately 32 the base circle will be more than the dedendum circle so you may have to add a straight line segment to the involute curve to go up till the dedendum circle and that the straight line has to be tangential to the involute curve at the end of that involute now the next thing is we shall create a revolve feature using the sketch what we have drawn earlier here I have given these two dimensions approximately this is equal to 1 times the module and this is equal to 1 and a half times the module this is not a standard formula to be copied this is only my convenience actually the dimension what should be defined is this dimension this is known as the reference assembly dimension this dimension should be defined because this is the dimension with which the assembly of bevel gears are done but uh, I am just ignoring at this point of time next step is to do the swept blend cut we shall use the trajectory as the uh, the pitch line what we have defined in the very first sketch that will be our uh, trajectory then we shall go to sketch section options and in the first section we shall select the loop of this uh, using project and the loop option the sketch we defined in the previous step the second section happens to be just a datum point at this end of this curve once it is done then it is patterned using axis option the, uh, the re, uh, axis of revolution for this uh, Revol revolve feature will be used for the axis pattern and we will parameterize using this relation mm. once the pinion is completed we will save the file and also we will make a copy of this file to create the crown gear I have done that also as I had told you earlier when the number of teeth is uh, less than 32 we need to add the straight line segment when the number of uh, segments are more than 32 the uh, involute curve itself will be passing through the dedendum circle so no need to add the straight line portion that modification we need to do otherwise the model will fail again as I told you this uh, this time I have used a, a root fillet in the within the sketch environment it is advisable that it should be done outside as a separate feature so once uh, this is done we need to modify the the parameters corresponding to the crown gear earlier it was z1 and delta 1 we need to change it to z2 and delta 2 again here z2 and within the first sketch we need to modify all our relations corresponding to the crown gear
delta 2 delta f2 delta a2 pcd2 like that we should not forget to do this change over otherwise our model will be incorrect so i have created one uh, assembly of uh, these two pinion and gear in the meantime i will just uh, switch off the curves and uh, surfaces And this is how the assembly looks. I have defined the gear between these two and also defined the diameter so that the correct speed ratio is maintained. As you can see in the animation, the gears are meshing perfectly. even at the back side they are meshing perfectly so if you do the systematic planning of your work creation of bevel gear is uh, quite straightforward and simple i hope you have enjoyed this uh, vi video of uh, bevel gray creation if you have any doubt and if you need any clarification please write in the comment section i will try to answer as far as possible thank you